In this video, I'm going to go over parsing data and show you how to pull information out of a string of text. So in my first example, I've got a couple of credit card transactions, one for McDonald's and one for Home Depot. And so I'm going to want to pull the vendor name, the store number, the city and the state from these descriptions. And to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to use the mid function to pull the vendor name. And so what the mid function does is basically selects the text that you want to pull your data from, select your starting position and the number of characters you want to pull. So my starting position in the description field is going to be the sixth character because there's five stars at the, at the beginning of the description. So I don't want to include those. So I'm going to start at position six and the number of characters I want, you know, rather than adding because the lengths are going to vary, what I'm going to do is find, find where the number sign shows up and subtract the spaces that I don't need. So I'm going to use the find function to say find the number sign here. And then what I'm going to need to do is subtract the five stars at the beginning as well as the space and the number sign because I don't want these to be included in my tally for how long I want the, I want the text to be. So I'm going to subtract seven there, five for the stars and two, one for the number sign and one for the space. And that'll get me the vendor name. Copy this down and that'll work for Home Depot as well. Now, if I had used just the space as opposed to the number sign, here I'd run into an issue because Home Depot has a space in the name. So one of the key things when you're parsing data is you have to think about the logic that you're going to apply to make sure that it can be used consistently. Because otherwise you're going to have to, you know, reconfigure your rules for for different data points. And so it's not going to be terribly useful. You want to make it as consistent as, as possible. And so what I'm going to do now is pull the store number. And the store number, again, I'm going to use the mid function here. And I'm going to find as my starting point the, the number sign again. Then text is one. But because I don't want to include the number sign, I want to start at the next character. I'm going to add plus one to my starting point. So that way it'll start on the one instead of the number sign. And because I know the number of characters are three digits long, I'm just gonna put the number three here for the length. And again, I'm gonna copy this down. And now I've got the store number four for both of those fields. Now what I'm gonna do is pull the city. And this is gonna be a little bit more trickier. Now I do have the comma there to help me out, but it's still gonna be a bit more complex than the other ones, just because it's not the first, not the first space or not, uh, not an identifiable character that I'm gonna be starting off to make it, make it easy. So I'm gonna start again with a mid function. And for my starting point, I'm gonna use the number sign to help me here. But now what I'm gonna to have to do is add another five characters to this because see, I've got the number sign plus the store number, that's four characters right there. And then I've got another space that's five. So I'm gonna push it from this number sign to the N in New York to put me at a starting point where I wanna be. So I'm gonna add five characters there. And now for the number of characters that I want, I'm gonna use the, um, the find function again, but this time I wanna find where the comma is. And once I find out where the, where the comma is, I'm gonna have to work back and actually it's not gonna move my screen a little bit here. Um, I'm gonna have to subtract the find function again where it was it was finding the, the pound sign. So I'm gonna select uh, a four again, so number one. But this time I'm gonna subtract five spaces from the number sign rather than adding to it like I was before. Because ultimately, again, I want to, you know, just narrow down on the text I need as opposed to um, just simply looking for where that, where that shows up. Because again, I, I'm basically undoing what I did here. Here I added five characters to get to the end, but this time I want to undo that so that I'm you know, taking out the, the amounts that I don't need. So once I close this, 
and that gets me the city of New York. Copy this down, and that works for the next example as well. Now, for for the state, um, this one is going to be a bit easier just because I can lean on the comma here again. So I'm going to use the mid function once more. And for my start number, it's going to be where the comma is. But here, I'm going to want to add two characters because I don't want to include the comma. And I don't want the space that uh, occurs afterwards. So, so I'm going to find the text uh, within A4, starting the one, and I'm going to add two to this. And the number of characters is going to be two because that's how long the, the state abbreviations are. Copy this down, and so now I've got the the city and and the state as well. So that's how you how you can set up the different rules. You can use the find function. You can actually put in the numbers. So there's all sorts of of ways that uh, you can split this up. So next example I'm going to use is reconfiguring names. So sometimes you'll have a name that's last name comma first or first name and last name. And so I'm going to show you how you'd extract that information out if you want to reconfigure it to, to flip it around per, perhaps. So my first example, I've got Anderson comma John. So I've got last name comma first name. So if I want to pull the first name out of here, I don't have to use the mid function. I can use the right function, which will pull the characters to the right of the of the text, right at the end of the text. And so I want to select cell. And for the number of characters, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to I'm going to have to use the find function again to find where the comma is. But this time I'm going to subtract that from the length of the cell itself. And the function for the length is len. So select the length of the cell, and I'm going to subtract where, where the comma shows up. So find text comma within here. And so that's going to allow me to just get the, the section of the string that shows up after the comma. And now for the last name, I can use the left function, which does the opposite of the right. And this one's going to be a bit easier because now I just have to find the comma again within here. And this time I want to minus the one, minus one because I don't want to include the comma. So that was a bit, that was a bit simpler. Now the same sort of logic can be applied if it's, you know, a, a space separating um, the name as opposed to, as opposed to a comma. So in this case, the first name shows up at the beginning of the string. So here I'm going to use the left function. And for number of characters, I'm going to use find where the space is start number and what that's going to do and I should subtract a one here and that'll give me John and for the last name I'm going to use the right function this time and again I'm going to have to use the len function because I want the length of, of the cell and I want to subtract where the space appears within here. And so now I've got names. So now if I wanted to mix them around however I wanted to, you know, if I wanted this one to be last name, comma, first name, I could just do Anderson, ampersand, comma, yeah, oops, ampersand, John. So I could, yeah, flip it around however I wanted to now that I've got it, got the data parsed out. So, and you could obviously combine this into one, one big formula if you wanted to, but that's, that shows you how you can break it out in, in, in both cases. Last example I'm going to do is dates and how you could adjust the dates. So, you know, if you've got uh, your calendar's month, day, year, which, which mine is, and here I've got a date that's day, month, year, this is going to read as text in Excel. So if I wanted to fix this, I could use, again, the mid function, the left function, and the right function to pull out that that I need. So for the month, I would need the bin function because it's right in the middle. So I'll start at um, position four, take the two numbers for the 12. For the day, I'll start at the left of the, uh, of the cell and take the first two characters. For the year, I start at the right and take the 
the last four. And so I could pull out these dates or pull out these numbers and then use the date function to say this is the year, this is the month, and this is the day. And by doing this, you, you make sure that it's in the format that your your computer's regional settings are in. Because one of the problems is if you know if it's switched around, then it's not going to be um, like calculating or reading properly. And so that's where using the mid function and knowing how to parse data can help you out in examples and situations like that. So that sums it up for for this video. I hope you found it useful, and uh, thanks for watching.